Hi everybody, this is Nick Dressler and I'm going to talk to you today about the importance of adopting standards into your curriculum. Um, this is this can be a really controversial topic, especially for career Catholic school teachers um, or, or teachers that are in, in private schools, uh, independent schools, teachers that, that teach outside of the public school system because it seems on the surface to be kind of unnecessarily bureaucratic, uh, seems like a step that maybe pu public schools have to take that that we don't uh, because of the because of an end of course exam or uh, because of no child left behind or some sort of some sort of uh, government program that that sort of gets in the way of what we what we consider learning gets in the way of quote unquote content and uh, it's maybe that that extra step that uh, the administrators of public schools have their their teachers take and and it's it's hard to see a reason for it. Um, I, I would offer that, in fact, maybe what, what the Catholic school does or the independent school, uh, but, but particularly in our Catholic school context, is not to be, not to take away things that, that public schools do uh, that make them worse, but to do everything that public schools do and then, and then add the extra context of the formation and um, uh, the Catholic piece and, and you know, the, the idea of, of of creating the entire the whole person, uh, the I think standards. As I've been convinced of, of adopting standards as as a a point for uh, all for teachers and students to look at uh, as a way to come together over a common goal, uh, to set goals and to make a a, com a community of learning uh, in which students can can learn forward and teachers can help them to do uh, better in, in each particular skill without necessarily feeling like that it is, it is student against teacher and more like it is student and teacher against the curriculum. Um, to have ready-made standards means that when we, when we give grades and when we assess students, we know that we are assessing them on things that will help them to be ready either for the next grade uh, or ready for ready for college, and in fact, ready for uh, those pesky standardized tests at the end of their senior year uh, or junior senior year of high school. So, um, adopting standards allows also allows a teacher to be more creative in the classroom. In that, the demonstrations the student needs to make are already clear to the student and to the teacher. The teacher can be can be uh, very very clear about what they want and sort of transparent and deliberate about what they want to have happen in the classroom. And they can be on the same page about moving forward with each particular activity. And it also holds the teacher accountable in that you know that each thing that you ask the students to do, whether it's an activity or um, an assignment or some sort of harder assessment, uh, with more at stake, that in each case, that these things are, are, are pure demonstrations of standards uh, and not trivia and not just sort of content memorization, but they're actually using the content as a way to move forward in, in their academics. Um, now, this adopting standards can also be tough because, you know, where do you get standards? What do you do? You have to write your own standards. And in writing your own standards, are we talking about looking back at your curriculum and figuring out things that you already do and trying to turn those into sort of comprehensive standards, that can be pretty daunting and it can be difficult to see what the point of that would be when you already kind of have it in your in your curriculum or in, in, your, uh, in your syllabus, whatnot. Um, what, what I would recommend is to adopt standards that have already been written, like the ACT standards that, uh, that the ACT puts out, and I'll show you, show you those. Um, the ACT college and career readiness standards are really great and they're really comprehensive. And it can actually, I'm an English teacher, so I'll just show you the English one, but it can really take a lot of stress off of the teacher and what you feel like you need to be doing in the classroom without necessarily changing what activities you already do. It can just give those activities focus as you move forward. So you can see that it does a couple things. First of all, it shows It shows you what you would need to do in each particular skill in order to essentially achieve 
a particular score on the ACT itself. Um, but you can also see that these, if you read these, uh, that all of these standards are, are really useful and certainly have usage outside of um, the test itself. So students can apply this to reading of various types, writing of various types, um, not just the, the types of questions that they see on the ACT. So what you're doing is you're killing two birds with one stone. One reason that a, a, a parent might send the, um, his or her student to a Catholic school is to perhaps get better mark on the ACT than they would have gotten in their public school system. And so here's a way by which we can we can help them on the test without teaching the test, which is something that we would all hate and not want to get into uh, teaching for. Um, this also allows for the teacher to uh, figure out specifically what's going wrong and give the give the student real authentic feedback about positives and negatives. So that if a student is perhaps not doing as well in a class, let's say a student has a 65 or 75 in the class, getting that grade report can be extremely demotivating. Uh, it can it can hit hard and cause a lot of stress. However, if you are able to tell a student that you have a 65, but within that grade, um, let's just focus on this skill here. As far as providing fairly straightforward introduction or conclusion or transition within a paragraph or essay, you are maybe the best person we have in class. You, you might be the best at that overall. Uh, out of any of the say sophomores that I teach, you are about, you are the best at this. And next time we go over this in class, uh, I'll be turning to you as kind of the expert in this category. Maybe maybe you even design an activity in which that person uh, is co-teaching this particular aspect, or uh, students have to check with that with that student in order to um, in order to to move on with their essay or whatever. They need to get that that particular spot checked by the expert, and that can actually turn. A person 65 uh, into a higher grade as they see that they, that they have value in the class and they can see the purpose of what they're doing. Um, now again it, it is tough to say should I just take something that someone else wrote and adopt it? Um, how does that apply to my class? How do I make sure that, that, that that's tailored to my class? And, and what I would argue is that the best thing you could do if you're going to adopt standards is to take something like the ACT or perhaps the Common Core Standards and literally adopt them word for word into your curriculum. Um, people who go to school strictly for writing standards, like they are curriculum gurus, have been paid a lot of money to write these. These are open source. It is okay to take these. Um, and there is no in my mind, unless you also have been trained in this, there's nothing that you or I or any other um, secondary school teacher could do to make these any better than what they are. Could you shift wording here or there? I suppose so, but at least for a year or two while you're first doing these, just to have these down as goals that other people have put out there makes it so that you're designing your class in order to, in order to get here uh, to these particular goals and you, and it's very easy for you or a new teacher to look at these and know where you're supposed to be uh, at a certain level of, of class. And as you can see, uh, these are called the English Career College and Career Readiness Standards. And the idea here is not that these guarantee a, a particular grade on the ACT. As you can see, it gives you a rough score range. But if, if you go through and read all of it, it does tell you that in fact, if a student can do do the six or the seven hundred level of each of the each of the skills that they are on pace to get an A in the 101 level of that course in college. So, for instance, if I can tell a student, I can tell a student that if they can get to 603 in my senior class, 602, 601 in my senior class with these different skills, then in fact uh, they are on pace to get an A in college. And so that is now, or for 101 at least. So that is a is something that these people at the ACT have studied. This, these are these are comprehensive list of skills that they uh, have put on this site. It is easy to sequence these things. It's easy to just pop these right into your class and uh, maybe not even change any activities, but just sort of change the goal, change, change what it is that you're doing moving forward. 
and have this monster be the thing that you and the student together are looking to take down, as opposed to being kind of the Wizard of Oz with all these objectives behind the curtain that you know that they don't, or perhaps you know the entirety of it, and you, sometimes you get to all of them, sometimes you don't, uh, and it's really sort of up, up to your own volition how much of this you reveal at any one time. To, to show this whole behemoth at the beginning and to chip away at it over the course of, I would argue to do it over the course of four years, but if you just do it for, for the year that you teach, uh, really gives a lot in terms of goal setting, gives a lot in terms of um, uh, growth mindset, for sure, gives a lot in terms of, of transparency to the student and creates, like I said, a cooperation between student and teacher where this curriculum, this is the bad guy, and you are the helper, you are the conduit uh, by which the student can heroically take this down, as opposed to being the enemy, the one that they're trying to defeat, um, and perhaps finding little cracks in the way that we do things where they can get the grade that they maybe don't deserve, uh, based on sort of little holes in the way that we have things planned. Thank you.